we were in this panel today and we're talking about what some art is and some art is just like a frame and this book is what it is is it's a collection of um all of the YouTube comments on Bob Seger's song Night Moves. <laughs> That's all it is. But it's really great. It's really beautiful. So I'm allowed to say that because I didn't write it. I don't even know how to write on YouTube. That was like one thing I get a lot of questions about YouTube or about Bob Seger. And I'm like, I don't even know. Okay. Like, uh, so what I do usually with this is I just talk about it. Today, I was um, walking around Philadelphia. And for whatever reason, I was talking in a southern accent to myself, and so I was like walking around, and I was going like, well, it's something about the Midwest, and it's something also just about the way the light is, the way it kind of suggests warmth, but also a certain pressure, and also something about disorientation, and about cars, and it's about um, sex, and it's about um, mortality, and it's about just the way that people feel about art when they're trying to feel something about art, but they're just, you know, in their home, and they're drinking a couple, and they're listening to this song, and it's real sad. Anyway, I was doing this, <laughs> and I was lost, and I was a little angry, and I was trying to think about anger, and um, this guy came over, because somehow I was all of a sudden standing in a pile of colorful plastic things that were long, things that were long, and plastic on the ground, and he came up and picked one up, and really, he was just trying to come over and talk to me, and he was like, um, so you're an actress? Because <laughs> I must have been like, oh, no. and I worked it out. And um, I didn't get it because I didn't understand what was happening with the plastic. <laughs> so I, I just kept walking. <laughs> and then I turned around and I was like, no, I am a poet. <laughs> like when, I, when it all kind of, um, it, it dawned on me what was going on. And uh, he was like, a what? And I was like, a po I'm a pointer. <laughs> and I'm a poet. <laughs> and he said to his friend, she's a poet. <laughs> and it was like everything. Oh, yeah, okay. That's why you're standing in a pile of plastic, all <laughs> colorful. <laughs> um, so one of the things about this book is that it is all of those things. And um, it's really hard to um, think about it without thinking about radios and love and the way we think about music, the way music is, or pop songs at least, American pop songs and maybe some Turkish pop songs <laughs> also, are, um, is about the, obviously the experience that we have when we're experiencing the songs, but also about, like a lot of times I think about the I Ching, like I consider this book a sort of I Ching or um, Magic 8-Ball, you know, so that if you're feeling blue, and the radio, I think of in the same way, you turn on the radio, and, you know, like, maybe you're going to something, and you're nervous, and all of a sudden, it's like, Sunday's warrior, me, me. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can make it, I know I can do it. That's what happens to me, because I have a CD player or a tape player. Okay, I should go back. So what happened was, I lost all control of music. Music was taken out of my hands. And I'm pretty, um, you know, I had up until this point, about five years ago, been very controlling about music, what I listen to, when I listen, how I listen. But then I, you know, everything broke and cars became a part of my life and they didn't have tape players or CD players or portals for MP3s. And so I just started listening to the radio and I sort of, you know, like went through feeling a little bit angry and then feeling a certain kind of surrender, like, you know what, this is all right, because not only is it this wild card um, and exercise in releasing my control over my artistic um, purview, but also it's just like anthropological study. It's not about music. It's about just like, what is this telling me? How am I supposed to be in love again? You know, like, wh how am I supposed to stay up all night? Um, <laughs> you know, and it just, um, it informs everything. Uh, so, when, so I, then I went home one night, I heard this song, and I went home, and I uh, looked it up, and I watched it, and I read all of these comments, and, you know, it's just so moved. Every day I find my way back to this. I find my way back to you, my butch. <laughs> there's a bunch that are to Butch, and there's a bunch that are to Pam. It works out that um, there it's pretty evenly split between songs to Bob, songs to people's first love, 
songs or anger towards other people that don't appreciate the love. <laughs> I love this line. This song makes me so nostalgic, it actually hurts. And then below that, somebody goes, me too, man. Me too. <laughs> um, a lot of times, people do this sort of orienting thing where they say how they got here, like, my dad brought me here or a concert brought me here, or How I Met Your Mother brought me here. That one I don't get. I know you guys don't either. Um, <laughs> American Pop brought me here. Um, and another one about cars. Do you know a car building TV show? Uh, well, that's fine. But then there's all this, so there's these narratives that run through Butch and Pam, and like people go into very long stories about like my first night, like working on my first night moves was magical, and I'm so glad, Stacy, that you were my first one. I always imagine they're in a cornfield, but they, they never say that explicitly. But when I'm in the, and it's very you know like there's a moon. But then all of a sudden, in terms of just like the narrative wonderment, like why things work as a piece of artwork is. You move around a composition, a painting, and all of a sudden there's like an unexpected flash of yellow, you know, on your composition or in a Alexander Calder. There's just like a little piece that you think will not allow for the balance to continue, but yet it somehow does. So here, um, Thai food. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> Um, Uncle Touchy Puzzle Basement. <laughs> I swear! Right here, I, I, read, I read the upsets. <laughs> you know, like there is the Joker, the Loki of this composition. One of the ways to think about it is that we all, we all and you all and us all, got together to make this exquisite corpse of a poem or a song or a story. And there's always the Loki and there's always the maudlin, like... It's hard for me to keep writing. My fingers are weak after too many beers. I'll go on. You're my man. You're my man. You know it. <laughs> or then the nostalgizing about time. Another thing that the song is about and that the, all of the comments are about that's really touching is death. Um, because the song is like autumn. Do you guys know it? Mm -hmm. Autumn closing in. It's, um, it's a really strange... Um, song about time in that he's a young man when he wrote it and it's all about being an old man looking back it's pre-nostalgic he's getting ready to be nostalgic um but i think he must have been about 20 when he wrote it or 25 and he's thinking about dying and like about he's getting ready to give up on life and he's going back remembering his first romantic evenings um and and preparing to like let go like autumn's closing in and it's really kind of like a tender moment in the song, this thunderstorm, the thunder is rolling in. Um, and so a lot of the people tell you how old they are in the um, comments. They're like, I'm 81, and I'm still working on my night moves, but I'm, you know, getting ready to let go too, Bob. They often refer to Bob and speak directly to him. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Hell, I'm 81 and I love this song. Anyone who is ever young has to choke a little when you hear it. It's the best anthem of youth ever written. That whole space, in a way, it's really not an anthem of youth. It's an anthem of, of um, preparing to be afraid of your loss of youth. It's so not about, you know, it's about just that holding. Um, yeah. And when you think about it in terms of being this collection of everybody just commenting, coming together, and that the way that the internet and YouTube and um, those sort of forums collapse time and space, and then I think it's quite lovely the way the song collapsed time and space. He keeps orienting us in the song, but yet it's, it's a non-specific orientation, really. Um, born 1945, Dearborn, Michigan, five feet, ten and a half inches. 1.79 meters. <laughs> uh, resumed recording and touring in 2006 after taking an 11 year old hiatus to raise his children. There's a lot to think about in that story. <laughs> like, was he like, all right, you're done? <laughs> I'll see you on the road. The kid's like, well, okay. <laughs> the response is a good height. Which is so perfect. It's like people 
know how to make it a, a nice piece. If it were all maudlin, if it were all factual, if it were all um, sort of these incendiary, there's a lot of anger and hate and like just attacks, it would never have worked. But because it is so perfectly balanced, this is like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just like, it's an infomercial for this book. <laughs> it's, it's an infomercial. You know, the thing is also, um, is there's a lot of curses in it. Um, so I want to be maybe gentle with curses. Pam, I do not know where you are now. I think of you every time I hear this song. I'm glad my first night moves were with you. I hope you have a great life. And this man keeps writing to Pam throughout the book. Every, um, every little while is more um, referring to her. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Thank you. <laughs>